Clicksothia here, welcome back to my channel. I know it's been a long time since my last video, but I've either been too busy or too lazy to make another. Instead, I have been reading quite a lot, so I thought I'd share with you some of the best books I read in 2023, in no particular order. It was a fun year in terms of reading, I read a lot of classics more than contemporary books, I think, and I managed to add quite a few books to my collection, so I'm really happy about having been able to read so many books this year, and now I'll share my favorites with you. To begin with, The Book Thief by Marcus Zizek. I absolutely love this book. I would highly recommend this to anyone. It's about a young girl in Nazi Germany who comes to live with her foster parents and steals books, hence the title. It is narrated by Death, and there's a lot of talk about the colors and the humans from the perspective of death while also following the story of this girl who learns to read, steals books, and then writes down the story of her life. It is an absolutely incredible story. It is astonishingly well written. It has a lot of beautiful figurative language and lots of cases. I think most of the book itself, when the author uses physical words to describe abstract things like the truth bleeding out or words being heavy, as if there are physical objects in the world instead of simply abstract concepts. This is a common thing throughout the book, and there are also absolutely unforgettable characters. There are moments in which you will be devastated by what happens to these characters, and I guarantee that you will absolutely adore this book by the time you've finished it even if it leaves you in tears. The Book Thief by Marcus Zizek, I simply cannot praise it enough. Next is a nonfiction. It is Phantoms in the Brain by Dr. V. S. Ramachandran and Sandra Blakesley. When I started this year, I did not expect a nonfiction book to end up in my favorites, but here we are. And I also never expected to read a nonfiction book with as much interest as I would read fiction, but I did it with this one because it was so wonderfully written and it simply kept the pages turning just as if it were a story. And a lot of the conditions detailed here were presented as if they were a story, like stories about patients turning up with these interesting syndromes. And it is so well explained that the general reader is easily able to understand it. I also appreciated all the literary quotes interspersed throughout this book. And it was really fun to read, and it also made me really curious about the most mysterious organ of all, the brain, and the way it works about all the things that go on behind the scenes, and the way we perceive the world. It describes a lot of interesting syndromes like phantom limbs, the neglect syndrome, and many, many others. It also talks about the way we see the world and about vision and the brain. I could not put this book down, and I would also highly recommend this to anyone. This was Phantoms in the Brain by Via Stamatendran and Sandra Blakesley. Next is Midnight Children by Salman Rushdie. I don't really have a physical copy of this book because I read it from the library, but I think this is my favorite book of all time. It is absolutely hilarious, incredibly well written, it was my introduction to magical realism. And I absolutely loved it. I loved everything about it, from the way the story was narrated to the story itself, which was so incredible and unexpected and often quite ridiculous. But it was really fun and interesting and made me laugh out loud so many times. The story follows the main character, Salim, relate the story of his life to his friend, a mighty pickle woman named Padma from the time his grandparents first met to the present moment, and it takes you through many years of pre-independent Indian history and also many years after India's independence until the 1970s, I think, 1977, if, I'm, if I remember correctly. I was so mesmerized by it, like I did not expect the story to turn out the way it did, and it was so incredibly written that I had never seen anyone write like that before, which is why it ended up as my favorite book of the books I read in 2023, and also the best book I've read in my life so far. 
The next book I'm going to talk about is Time Shelter by Georgi Gospodinov, translated to English by Angela Rodell. Now, this book actually won this year's International Booker Prize, and <laughs> once you read it, you'll know why it did, because it is absolutely brilliant. Now, uh, when I first read it, it was slightly confusing, I'll admit. Like, I read about 80 pages, but then I didn't really understand it, so I had to go back and start over, but... <laughs> the second time, it really was much clearer, and I'm so glad I pressed down because in the end, it truly was a rewarding experience. It is packed with a lot of observations and thoughts about time and the way it moves because uh, there is a lot to do with time in this book, as the title suggests. It is about opening up clinics of the past, which is like reproducing the style of a decade inside a building to treat Alzheimer's patients by synchronizing their internal times with the time outside of them. Like if a person feels that they're living in the past in a particular decade like the 1960s, then having them in a room which is decorated in the style of the 1960s could make them feel better or happier. And this was the idea with which the character Gustine started his clinic of the past but this eventually became a much greater thing and almost a disaster in my opinion when even normal people who are not suffering from any disease of that sort started to seek out these time shelters just in order to escape the present and to return to the simpler time of the past when they were much younger, healthier, and happier. To relive the past and to reject the present, basically. And the whole of Europe moves towards this. That is the story of this book, but it is so much more than just the plot. And uh, some of my favorite quotes from this book is that the past does not flow in one direction, and the things I will not dare to do will transform into stories. And all happened stories are the same, but every unhappened story is unhappened in its own way. I really love that, but one thing I found slightly irksome when I started reading this book is that all of the dialogues are not written separately or they're not given any single or double quotes around them. So at first it was slightly annoying to sort of pick out the dialogues from these because there was no partition between the dialogues and the remaining part of the text. But overall, it is an extremely rewarding read, I think. I loved it, the concept is brilliant. It is well written and I really hope to be able to read the original one day. If I ever manage to learn Bulgarian, until then, I think the translation will have to surface, and I really love this. I would also highly recommend this to anyone. This was Time Shelter by Georgi Gosporno, translated to the English by Angela Rodell. Next is another brilliant book, perhaps also one of the best I've ever read. It is The Seven Moons of Mali Almeida by Shahan Karnatilagi. I hope I'm pronouncing the name right. And once again, I absolutely loved it, but for entirely different reasons than I did The Book Thief, for example, because the way it is written is so different. Like, there's not much figurative, st figurative stuff around here. It's more direct, and all the descriptions are sharp, and there's a lot of these exact observations. And there isn't a lot of those uh, metaphorical things, I think, but... <laughs> In, in spite of all that, it was still incredibly well written. It was just another style of writing, but done extremely well. And I absolutely loved it. It's about a gay photographer in 1989, Colombo, who dies and then goes to the afterlife of sorts and then tries to figure out how he ended up there and how he died. But it was not the story itself, but the way it was narrated that was most striking to me. And especially the way the characters were described, and they really did seem like real, well-defined characters. I really loved the way that the characters were written in this book. But most of all, what struck me from the very first line was that this book is actually written in the second person narrative and in the present tense for the most part. But they were both combined in this book, so it was a really different from a lot of other books I've read, but it was extremely enjoyable. 
Now, I know I usually love more detailed descriptions with a little more flowery language, but I also absolutely love this book, even though it had none of that, arguably. The way things were described were sharp and precise. I think those are the words I could give to describe the way things were described in this book. Or really, I can also say that there was not much of description at all, but in this film, it is narrated almost perfectly. <laughs> That's the word that comes to mind. This is near perfection in terms of narration. I love the way the story was written, basically. And it is incredible. No wonder why it won the Booker Prize in the year 2022. So this was The Seven Moons of Mario Almeida by Shohan Karnatilidi. Next is Malgari Landscapes. It is actually a collection of works by R.K. Narayan. It has short stories, essays, and also excerpts from novels. I liked it a lot, but I also wish that I could read the entire novels after reading this, so I think this book was a success for the most part. I love the short stories. Now, I don't think these are all the short stories R.K. Narayan has written. I think I will find more short stories in other collections, but this one claims to be the best of Arganayan's writing, and I did enjoy it. So, this was Mangari Landscapes by Arganayan. Next is an absolute classic, 100 Years of Solitude by Gabriel Garcia Marquez, translated to English by Gregory Warbassa. Now, you cannot talk about magical realism without mentioning this book, and it absolutely delivers. It is the story of the Buendia family, who live in the town they built, along with other people, called Macondo. And basically, that is all I can tell you, because the plot is extremely intricate. I mean, they've even provided a family tree at the start for those who might get confused. And yeah, it really could be confusing, because the plot is not normal. It is extremely meandering, but... Um, linear for the most part, I think, but there is a whole lot of foreshadowing in the plot, and it is amazing. Extremely fun, I think fun sums up the experience. I love the ending and the story itself. It is, of course, ridiculous in some places, but an excellent read, and I'm so glad I was able to read it this year. It is an amazing book, really. I enjoyed every moment of reading this. And truly, I've got no words to describe it. So, this was 100 Years of Solitude by Gabriel Garcia Marquez. This edition translated by Gregory Rabessa. Next is the novella Heart of Darkness by Joseph Conrad. And once again, I cannot recommend it enough. It is a great book. In spite of how short it is lengthwise, it follows Charles Marlowe as he journeys up the Congo River in Africa to locate and bring back a certain mysterious man named Mr. Kurtz, who's the master of a station there, supplying ivory down the river. And it is about the kinds of people, mostly the natives he meets along the way, the changes that take place in men at such extreme isolation from everything they've ever known, from lifestyles so, so different to what they were used to. And it is about these changes that the book talks, or rather the character of Charles Marlowe speaks in the book in such depressing detail. It is a bleak story. It is not positive or happy as the title must have presaged. It is still brilliantly crafted because it really does create an effect, I think. It really does make you think about these people who trudge through such deep, dark, and mysterious locations in a continent, which was so unexplored at that time, about the, those uncontacted tribes there who live so differently from these people. It is actually narrated by another character and not Charles Marlowe, who in fact tells his story to that character. A great book, absolutely recommended. Really loved it. There's this harrowing effect of this book that I can't really describe at present. It is almost like a chilly feeling in your bones. It's really dark. You're really going into the heart of darkness with this one. And it is mysterious, almost terrifying in some places. And I do love the way it is written. And I love how mysterious the character of Mr. Kurtz was all throughout the book. And then we finally get to meet him. And 
we get to compare our expectations with what we find there and all about that but and it's really about the way in which this journey of the combo over changed the life of this character named Charles Marlowe, changed his perspective on life. There's a lot of reflection on the differences between the world he used to live and the world he was forced to live, the world he was forced to enter there and about life itself. So I think it's a great read. This was Heart of Darkness by Joseph Conrad. Next is Wuthering Heights by Emily Bronte. This is such a famous classic that there's barely anything I can add to the discussion. We all know it as a turbulent love story. Wuthering Heights is in fact the name of the house in which the events of the story unfold. What I found interesting was that the events of the story all seem to take place in the past when compared to the time of the narration. The narrator is also interesting because instead of being one of the major characters of the story, he is an outsider entirely, who is more like an intruder into their lives, and he's actually told the story by the old housemaid at Wuthering Heights, Nellie Dean, and that is how we learn the story too, so I felt like it was almost like the author had created this character of Mr. Lockwood so that we would also be able to learn more about the characters at Wuthering Heights, almost like an intruder, just like Mr. Lockwood does. The story is narrated in the first person by Mr. Lockwood, but the major part of it is actually narrated by Nellie, the maid. All that I have to add is that I found it really interesting that the narrator of the story is usually absent for most of the major events that take place in it, which is really interesting to me. So, this was Wuthering Heights by Emily Bronte. Next is another book I don't physically have with me. It is a collection of short stories, actually. It is Strange Pilgrims by Gabriel Garcia Marquez, translated by Edith Grossman. It is a collection of 12 short stories about the experiences of Latin Americans in Europe. Some of these short stories are nice. Most were tragic, if I remember correctly. A few are actually quite haunting, such as Trail of Your Blood in the Snow or I Only Came to Use the Phone. Those two were extremely haunting for me. I did not expect them to have such bleak endings. And then there are also some nice lighthearted stories like um, Light is Like Water. There's also stories that take a turn for the worse at the end, like Miss Forbes's Summer of Happiness. A few really short ones were also in there, like um, Tramontana, Sleeping Beauty and the Airplane. <laughs> it's just short, I couldn't really understand the point of the story because nothing really happens in it, but it was included in the collection. And I think what describes it the best is it's mostly a lot of tragedy. It's a set of bleak and depressing events in most of the stories, not all. My favorite story from the collection was The Saint, which is about a man whose daughter has died, but her body is still well preserved even after being in the coffin and underground for two years. So he tries to get her sainted, but it does not happen for many years and he keeps trying, but the story was written in such a humorous way, but it still managed to convey so many feelings, especially towards the end. Those feelings of nostalgia when our narrator returns to Greece, only to realize that all of the things he had seen in the past were gone, but only this friend remained who was still trying to get his daughter sainted. I thought that story was really wonderful, that was my favorite, but all of the stories in the collection were well written, so I would recommend that. Next is The Three Musketeers by Alexandre Dumas. I really enjoyed reading this book. It's translated by Lowell Blair. I do hope to read the original one day. It was really fun, the story was the interesting part, and I also loved the way the dialogues were presented. I enjoyed the plot even though it was tragic at the end, and I absolutely loved every moment of reading this book. It was incredibly hilarious. The Three Musketeers by Alexandre Dumas, translated by Lowell Blair. Finally, I'd like to end this list with a perennial classic known and loved by everyone. Pride and Prejudice by the one and only Jane Austen. I did love this book, especially the dialogues. The dialogues were great. They're wonderful, amazing. It tells the story of the Bennet sisters, especially Elizabeth Bennet. And of course, everybody knows the story. 
A lot of people love it and I also absolutely enjoyed it. But I still think Emma by Jane Austen was better than Pride and Prejudice. I read Emma last year, which is the reason why it's not on this year's list. But still highly recommend it. It's a great book. There's a reason why it's a classic. Go read it. So that is the end of my list of the best books I read in 2023. I think there were 13 books in this list. Reading is my absolute favorite thing to do in the world and I really hope to make more videos like this in the future. I hope to get better at talking about books. This time I really do hope to make more videos in the coming months, especially after March, by which time my board exams will be over. So stay tuned for that. And I also cannot wait to read more books in 2024, especially The Beasting by Paul Murray and the Promise by Damon Galgood and Ulysses by James Joyce, and also Crime and Punishment by Fyodor Dostoevsky, among a lot of other novels I hope to read next year. Thank you so much for watching. I know Christmas is over, but Merry Christmas, a Happy New Year, and also two-year launch anniversary to the James Webb Space Telescope that coincides with Christmas. It's all over, but still, thank you so much for watching. Bye!